Everyone, uh, can you all hear me at the back? Thank you. <laughs> yes, thank you very much for coming out on such a gloriously Irish day. Um, <laughs> the, it's a good day to come out and, and learn a bit about lawns and hopefully tomorrow the sun will come out and you'll all be able to get out there and, and do some of the things that uh, you might think need to be done after today's chat. Um, I'm David Britton. I'm Kiwi Care's technical support manager is my title. Uh, what that means is I spend a lot of time um, in the office, on the, on the phone, and uh, answering emails from people like yourselves that have, may have a, uh, a question about uh, identifying a weed or identifying a pest or a disease in the garden and looking for the, for the best solutions. And hopefully at Kiwi Care we do our best to, to help in that. Uh, you can go onto the, the, like the Kiwi Care website. Um, and you might find the answer there, but if you don't, you can give us a call or send us an email, and we love hearing from you. Uh, a little bit about KiwiCare, for those who don't know. KiwiCare is a wholly New Zealand-owned and operated uh, company based here in Christchurch, out in Bromley, which is where our head office is, and our manufacturing facility, and our research and development lab laboratories. Um, we do also have offices in Auckland and uh, teams around the country. Uh, but what KiwiCare is really all about is sort of what we call innovation and expertise. We're not just sort of looking around the world and bringing things from elsewhere um, and selling them on in New Zealand or even copying other things. We like to think we look for what are particular problems for uh, people in their homes and gardens in New Zealand and come up with novel and better solutions for any of those problems. But today we're just going to talk about uh, uh, lawns, lawn care. Uh, so this, this time of the year, obviously, we're into spring. Um, and uh, the, the lawn has been through sort of a, the winter dormancy. Um, and when the, through the winter, grasses tend to lose a lot of energy. They're not photosynthesizing as much. There's not as much sunlight. Um, and there might be, we might have had damp conditions, so they've been sitting in damp soils. Uh, but particularly clay soils, that might mean that there's less oxygen getting to the root systems. Um, and there's, all that will affect the microorganisms around the roots of the grasses. So around the roots of grasses and other plants, there's what's known as the rhizosphere which is that the area just around the roots and in and amongst the roots uh, where the microorganisms in the soil, the beneficial microorganisms, live and they work in a, uh, together with the roots. roots. The roots of grasses on their own, if you had sterile roots, they are not very good at absorbing nutrients from the soil. So even if there's fertilizers on the, on the lawn or there's plenty of nutrients in the soil, those roots on their own are not very good at absorbing those nutrients. They need the microorganisms around the root systems to convert those nutrients into a form that can be passed on to the roots of the grasses. The grasses in, in return pass some sugars back to those microorganisms and it's a symbiotic relationship. So anything you can do to help that rhizosphere be a nice healthy one, uh, the, the better it will be for your lawn grasses. So oxygen, getting oxygen down to those roots is important, not just for the oxygen for those microorganisms, but the oxygen for the root systems themselves. As roots, unlike the foliage of a grass, which is sitting out in the, in the light and photosynthesizing, and actually when it's photosynthesizing, it's making oxygen. The roots are not photosynth photosynthetic, so they actually need oxygen to, to grow and to metabolize. So you need your lawn to be oxygenated as much as possible. So through a win winter period, uh, where it might have been damp, and if, particularly if it's a sort of clay soil, there might be a reduction in oxygen getting to the roots and it slows the growth of the, of the grass. Through winter, you might also be getting more uh, precipitation, more rain, 
and, and that will be leaching nutrients out of the soil. So through the winter period, you're losing nutrients generally. What that means is when you come into spring, it's the time to get your lawn going again. Um, and one of the things I do at Kiwi Care is I also spend a lot of time looking at what NIWA and the Met Service are forecasting for the next uh, two or three months. Um, and I look at what people are doing, looking at on our website. And our website gets about a, a million visits a year from people in New Zealand. Um, and I, we can track what, what people are looking at, what sort of weeds they're looking at in the lawn, or whether they're looking at grass grub problems. Um, and that, all that information together with what NIWA and Met Service are predicting can give us an idea of what's trending at any time, what the problems are likely to be over the next uh, couple of months. Um, and NIWA and Met Service are, are predicting um, for probably the first time for quite a few months below normal temperatures for the next couple of months in New Zealand and this part of the world. Um, they are also predicting slightly above normal rainfall and soil moisture. And all that really means is that we're going to get a normal spring flush of growth. So it's, a, it's going to be a pretty normal spring. Uh, in spring, you tend to get lots of fluctuations of temperature and rainfall. And I think we can say that they're, they're getting that right so far. So we're expecting a normal spring flush this year. When, it, when, that comes, when we think about that as far as lawn maintenance is concerned, um, probably the first thing I would say was, you know, if your lawn is poorly draining, if today you would find puddles on your lawn, then it's important to get out there and do something to improve the drainage of the lawn. It's not only about uh, getting uh, water out of the lawn and stop, stopping puddling and things like that. It's also about that getting oxygen into the lawn soil itself. So you might consider uh, getting out there with uh, a fork if your lawn isn't too big and putting in some manual labor and sort of forking over the, over the lawn. So you stick the, the fork into the ground and give it a gentle ease so that you're opening up the structure of the soil. Um, or you can hire a, a coring machine which will go along and take out cores of, of soil from the lawn. And that opens up the structure of the lawn. It lets, <coughs> lets water drain away more easily. It lets oxygen into the soil. And it just loosens up the structure. So particularly if you have a, a clay soil, uh, that is a good thing to do at this time of the year. The other thing you can do is to, if you have clay soil, is to apply some gypsum. I think there's gypsum somewhere, but oh, gypsum at the end. So there's a clay breaker. Um, or you can use the Kiwi Care, uh, which is seven day green, which is a combination. Oh, sorry, that's the wrong one. <laughs> Lawn thickener, which is a combination of seed and gypsum. The gypsum helps uh, break up the structure of clay soils. It stops those clay particles sticking together so strongly. So if you've got clay soil, gypsum will slowly uh, increase the friability of the soil, make the soil structure more loose, and it allows better drainage and, again, more oxygen into the soil and to the roots. After the winter months, and while it's still damp, uh, a lot of people will have problems with moss in their lawns. So moss is something that uh, thrives in, in damp conditions, and it thrives in shady areas, and where the soil pH is low. In other words, the soil is acidic. And you'll get acidic soil, particularly where you've uh, continually applied fertilizer. So if you're adding fertilizers to lawns all the time, I thought that's great, you're adding nutrients to the soil, but it tends also to reduce the pH. It tends to make the soil more acidic every time you apply a fertilizer. So the things you need to do for moss are to sort of increase the light that's getting to the area. So if there's something you can do 
maybe cutting back trees or cutting back shrubs or anything that's shading the area where the moss is. The more light you can get to the area, the less suitable it is for the moss to grow. You can improve the drainage, so do that forking in the area or put the core over it um, or use the gypsum and try and improve the drainage in the area. So the soil's less damp, again, you're making it less suitable for moss growth. You may, may want to also just kill the moss. Okay. Yep. So Lawn Pro Moss Clear is a, a product that you can apply to the lawn and it'll kill the moss without harming the grass. There are other products uh, that are iron-based moss killers, which work very effectively on killing the moss. But the iron, the iron has the advantage in that it's a, it's a fertilizer as well, it helps green the grass up. But it doesn't kill the spores of the moss. So moss clear will kill the moss and its spores, so it helps stop the moss coming back so quickly. So we sell a lot of that this time of the year. The other thing, as I said, you can do is to raise the pH of the soil. Um, and the classic way to raise the pH of soil is to add lime. Is that lime there? <laughs> well, we have, we have uh, lime in our seven-day green lawn fertilizer. So it's actually 70% lime, and then the rest are uh, fertilizer is ready, readily available and slow release, plus a few other things I'll talk about later. So if you can raise the pH, bring it up more towards pH 7, which is neutral, um, the, the moss won't grow. You're also, you know, with a seven day green, you're also applying nutrients. So you, another thing about mosses is they do tend to grow places where the, there's low nutrient in the soil or low available nutrient. Yes, sir. Yes, look, looking to uh, uh, test the pH in your soil is the question. Um, yes, there are good pH meters out there. Yeah, some of the cheaper ones that you might find in hardware stores, etc., garden centers, might not last very long. Uh, but if you get a good one, if it's something you're going to be doing all the time, and it's actually a pretty good thing to do in all parts of your garden, uh, just to check that the pH, you know, maybe you have... Uh, rhododendrons or azaleas or something like that and you want to make sure that the, the pH is kept acidic for them. Uh, so buying a good pH meter um, is, is well worthwhile. Uh, no, it's not something we keep Kiwi Care has in its range currently. Uh, so, but yeah, I'm sure the good people at Odorines would be more than happy to, to talk to you about that and give you some advice on which one would be a good, good one to get. <clears throat> yeah, if, you're, if your lawn's been through a stressful winter and your lawn's been wet for long periods and as things start to warm up, another common problem uh, are lawn diseases. Uh, so there are various fungal diseases that lawn, lawn grasses will get. Um, more common ones around this part of the world would be red thread. Um, red thread tends to cause mottled brown patches in the lawn. Um, so if anybody's had grass grub problems in the past, they'll have seen these mottled brown patches. And red thread causes something very similar and is often mistaken for grass grub damage. But the difference is if you look at the edges of those mottled brown patches on the lawn, you may see a pink or red coloration. And those are the red spores of the red thread fungus. Um, it thrives where lo the lawn uh, leaves, the blades have been wet for long periods and, it's, and, and in warmer, moister, hum more humid conditions. Uh, we now have a, a fungicide, a lawn fungicide called uh, Lawn Pro Fungus Controls for Lawns. Yeah. 
like a game I used to play, Pelmanism, where you tried to guess where all the products were. Um, so this is a, a liquid fungicide, uh, protective and curative for a whole range of fungal diseases in lawns. Works very well on red thread. But the other thing for red thread and most of the other fungal diseases is to try not to have the lawn blades sitting wet for long periods. So not much you can do about it on a day like today. But if, you are, if, you, if we're getting into the period when you are irrigating your lawn, it is important to irrigate the lawn in the morning, not in the evening. If you irrigate it in the morning, then it has the day time to dry off. So the blades dry off. You're not, you know, leave the, uh, the soil wet, which is where you want it to be wet. You're watering the lawn to water the roots, not the, not the leaves. Uh, so if you can get the, the leaves dry, then those fungal diseases won't cause problems. So if you water in the morning, it dries off. If you water in the evening, then the, the lawn will stay wet through the night. And that tends to encourage many of the fungal diseases The, the, the spores of most fungi are either airborne or waterborne, or if you're actually working on the lawn, you know, mowing or just walking backwards and forwards on the lawn, you will be spreading the spores from one part to another. But most of them will be airborne or waterborne. Um, red thread will go both ways. Uh, but obviously, if it's being waterborne, it's only splashing a little, it's only moving a little bit through the lawn. Or when it, if it gets airborne, then it'll move. They'll move quite long distances. Um, but yeah, red thread can just turn up on your lawn without without you knowing anything about it. Just oh, you know, over a few nights, you'll suddenly see the these brown patches appearing. Uh, just to confuse things, another another common fungal disease is one that's called brown patch, um, and it tends to cause. Uh, less sort of mottled appearance brown patches, but more single brown patches about the size of a soccer ball on the lawn. And it's spread in much the same way, and it tends again to like those sort of moist conditions on the, on the lawn foliage. Again, the uh, uh, lawn fungus control uh, will control it as well. And then one we had a lot of last year, it'll be interesting to see whether it's as common this year, is one called Pythium Greasy Patch, uh, which tends to make the lawn start to go uh, slimy looking. So you'll get browned off patches, but those browned off patches in wet, in wet conditions will look slimy. And they'll even look as if, they'll even start to go black. As, and it looks like somebody's poured uh, used engine oil on the lawn. So you'll get this black, slimy, oily appearance in patches on the lawn. So that's pithy and greasy spot. <laughs> the, the Lawn Pro Fungus Control for Lawns will control it as well. We also do another product called uh, Root Protect Aliette, which is for controlling uh, Pythium and Phytophthora uh, in, in uh, root rot diseases in plants. It is also very good on the Pythium greasy spot. Comes in pink packaging, which is hopefully down there. <laughs> good. Um, and then so another one that's probably less of a, pr a problem. It doesn't really do too much damage to lawns, but people don't like it very often. Or it might be a problem in, in bowling greens and things like that would be fairy rings. Um, so you get uh, br greener, rings of growth in your lawn and they'll send them move out from a central spot and then you might even still you might even get mushrooms coming up in those patches so this is just the spread of uh, fungal mycelium from a central spot and they spread out slower and slower and they actually reduce they're actually uh, releasing nutrients as they spread out so that's why you get these greener rings where the where the mycelium is spread out but they do Sometimes you will get the lawn grass in the middle of those rings start to uh, struggle and brown off in stress times. Uh, but Thyram is again very good, at, or the Lawn Pro Fungus Control is very good for, for fairy rings and mushrooms in lawns. Some people 
get concerned about mushrooms popping up in their lawn, particularly if they've got children and they don't know whether the, the mushroom is something that the children might uh, consume and be poisoned by. Most of those mushrooms wouldn't be poisonous, but people just don't want to take the chance. Another thing, another thing that can be a problem in lawns is thatch. <laughs> Does anybody know what I mean by thatch in the lawn? Yeah. So thatch is, if you think of a thatched house and the straw on a, on, a, on a roof, and it's sort of like that. It's the dead grass that builds up under the blades, the healthy green blades of grass, and on top of the soil. So as, as grasses grow, their outer leaves naturally die off. And when you're mowing the lawn, there will be lawn clippings that you're cutting off that will drop down into the lawn. And you will even get roots and things will start to die at, at the top of the, top of the l lawn soil. And all that dead material is called thatch. Some thatch is good. Too much thatch is bad. If the thatch is more than sort of a couple of centimetres thick, it's bad for the lawn. It acts as a sort of spongy layer which holds on to moisture and keeps that moisture level up in the soil. So you get a lot of those fungal diseases that we've just talked about tend to uh, proliferate in that thatch layer. The thatch layer also, if it's too thick, will st stop oxygen getting down into the soil. It may, even if it's thick enough and dense enough, stop water getting easily down through into the soil. The ideal is to have the thatch layer being broken down by microorganisms, uh, whether it be fungi and bacteria, breaking down that dead material at the same rate as it's being built up. If that's the way it is, if it's a nice balanced breakdown and build up, then you don't get any problems. But if the build up starts to become faster than the bac bacteria and fungi are able to break it down, then, that, then it's a problem to the lawn. The lawn will start to get spongy and bad and it will start to be uh, susceptible to disease in particular and lots of pests as well. So you can, if, that, if your thatch layer is too thick, you can certainly go and get a grass rake and you know, if your lawn isn't too big and you're feeling fit, you can go and rake all that dead material out. Your lawn will look a bit bad for a few days until it sort of settles down again. Or you can hire a dethatching uh, machine which will go through and it's a mechanical rake and it will clear out the, the thatch, sort of tears up the lawn. The lawn will come back and it'll, it'll benefit from that, but we've come up with a, a, what we think is a better option. If I can find it. Yep. Yep. So we have a new product called Lawn Pro Dethatch. So dethatch is a, a formulation of uh, fermentation products. It's a, a sort of natural product. And what it is, is essentially food for those microorganisms that break down the thatch naturally. So instead of out getting out there and mechanically tearing up the lawn, you apply the dethatch and it encourages those microorganisms that you, the lawn might be lacking and you get a faster breakdown of the thatch in a natural way. And those microorganisms are breaking down that thatch and it is returning the nutrients from that dead material to the lawn soil. And it's returning the humus, the humates, uh, the complex carbon molecules from the, from the lignin and cellulose in that dead material back into the soil. And that's all good for the soil. So we're redressing, we're putting the lawn back into balance and the breakdown of thatch back into balance. So lawn pro D thatch, yep. Yes. Yeah, so you've you've got a hover mower, so it's it's putting 
you, you're not you're not lifting the, your clippings at all. You're always mulching those clippings back into the lawn. So yeah, you that the adding the dethatch will definitely help break down the, those extra clippings that you're putting back on there. Be well worthwhile in that sort of situation. Yeah, we'll we'll sort of come on to mowing and, and mulching in, in a bit. Uh, but another thing you people will have problems with in their lawn, sort of this time of the year, of course, were lawn weeds. As as the warmth comes on, uh, the grass starts to grow, but so do all those nasty weeds, those broadleaf weeds in your lawn that you don't you don't want messing up that nice even look of your grass lawn. And we are talking about grass lawns here, and grass lawns, in a sense, are a sort of an unnatural thing because we're trying to have the same the same grasses over a big area, and we're trying to keep all everything else out. We just want it nice and even and looking green and good as a as our outdoor carpet. So from a lawn weeding point of view, so Kiwi Care has a, a, a several uh, lawn weed killers. Uh, the first and foremost among those would be Lawn Pro Turf Clean. So Turf Clean is what I'd call the routine maintenance product for your lawn for controlling broadleaf weeds. It contains three different active ingredients, all of similar modes of action, but all have a sort of slightly different range of weeds that they control. So with the three ingredients, you get the broadest range of broadleaf weeds, all controlled at the same time. It is uh, a product that was developed for New Zealand lawns, rather than lawns across the ditch. So the balance of the three nutrients is such that it's not likely to harm the finer turf grasses that we tend to grow in New Zealand, and particularly sort of down here in Canterbury. Yes, yep, good point. Um, we do have a recommendation on this product, not, not to apply to a lawn under two months old, uh, but if it's two to six months, then you apply at half the rate. Uh, but once it's past six months old, it's mature enough that it can handle the full rate. We also have, uh, for those who like convenience, our Turf Clean and Green. So this is essentially the Turf Clean that's in the concentrate product uh, with some fertilizer, uh, nitrogen and iron to green up the lawn um, on an, in a in a hose end applicator. So it's convenient, you stick the hose onto the end of this, go out onto the lawn, have the hose, turn the hose on, um, you switch the tap to on, hose it onto the lawn, all you need to do is wet the grass, you're not trying to uh, water the lawn, you're just wanting to wet the grass and the weeds. When you're finished, you switch it off. Should you accidentally, you know, someone calls you and you go in, into the flower bed, you can just switch it to water only and hose it off the, any plants that you accidentally put it on. So you have complete control of what you're doing. It's really easy to do. We've actually just launched, having, having just launched D-Thatch, the Lawn Pro D-Thatch, we've actually have a turf clean and green where we added the D-Thatch as well. So you're, you're killing the weeds, you're fertilizing the lawn and you're rebalancing the thatch layer all in one product. Then we have another one, uh, Lawn Pro Prickle and Hydrocottle. Uh, okay, hopefully, I don't know, may not be here. But Lawn Pro Prickle and Hydrocottle is another uh, herbicide for control of broadleaf weeds in lawns. But of course, as its name suggests, it's, it is particularly good at uh, prickly weeds, so the anehunga weed, or thistles, and hydrocotyl. Uh, but it will also control a big broad range of those broadleaf weeds. Uh, my recommendation to people is generally to use the turf clean products maybe three times, and then switch to the prickle and hydrocotyl. Everything that turf clean doesn't deal with, prickle and hydrocotyl does. Yeah. Over what of time? It depends how many law, how many weeds you've got, but if you were if you're doing sort of the average lawn, you might be spraying your lawn two, three times a year, maybe most. Um, so it's a good it's a good 
It's sort of good pest control policy, if you like, to swap what you're using occasionally. Um, if you just use turf clean all the time, what you would be left with, the weeds that you tended to be left with, would be the things that are a bit tolerant of the herbicides and turf clean. And they tend to be those little trifoliate weeds, so oxalis or some of the clovers. Um, and uh, so if you switch to the prickle and hydrocotyl, it tends to be good on all those ones that turf clean is going to be less good on. And that just means that you cover the broadest range of weeds. Another weed which isn't really broadleaf, well it isn't broadleaf weed, other weeds that you might get in your lawns would be sort of coarse grasses, you get any tufts of uh, other grasses popping up in your lawn, grasses you don't want to be there. So poa annua, annua might pop up, or you might get uh, cooch twitch, uh, in other parts of the country, kikuya, paspalum. Etc. So they look different, they have a different colour green, they might form tufts in the lawn, and you want to get rid of them. And unfortunately, the broadleaf weed killers, the turf cleans and prickle and hydrocotyl, don't really affect them. So a good option is to get something like uh, uh, the weed out gel, or Kiwi Care do a, an invade gel, but a gelled glyphosate product. And these come in a in a bottle with a brush top. You squeeze the gel out onto the brush and you just paint this onto the central crown of those coarse grasses. Don't need to paint all the foliage, just those central growing crowns. So grasses grow from the center so that they don't have a growing tip up above the ground. Their growing tip is actually down in the middle of the grass. So you just paint it on the middle of the grass and that'll kill it down to the roots. Yes, sir? Okay, yeah, I'll, I'll, come, I'll come back to that, yeah. So if you're, if you're uh, um, wanting to kill those coarse grasses, just painting the gel onto the central crown, we'll go down and kill it to the roots, and it's generally better than trying to manually remove those grasses, because if you leave any root fragments, they'll come up again. But so your, your question about the uh, uh, grass clippings, so if you're using any of the broadleaf weed killers on your lawn, our advice is to dispose of the first clippings. Then if you want to compost the clippings thereafter, just ensure that the clippings are composted fully for six months before you would use them in a, as a mulch or in your flower beds so that there's no herbicide left uh, to do any damage to your, to your plantings. No, all, all these products have obviously have gone through uh, a process of approval by the EPA, the Environmental Protection Authority, um, and, and they're approved for use in home gardens as well, uh, many of them are as in, commer in the commercial use. But to get, to get an approval for home garden use is sort of a higher bar. Um, and they assess what the potential risks are of them all. Our, our recommendation for all of them is to sort of keep children and pets out of the way while you're actually applying them and until they're dry. Once, once it's dry on the lawn, etc., then they're safe. Any other questions? Anybody have any other questions on lawn weeds? Yeah. Yeah, yes, no, good point. Um, and I did bring, some, bring along some uh, of our new garden guides, and you will see on the back of it there, there's sort of a timetable of the best times to do things. And for most things, herbicides, applying fertilizers, uh, doing most of these things, yeah, spring and autumn are generally the best times to do anything on your lawn. 
and avoid doing too much in winter and summer when the, the grasses are stressed. So that's, that's a very good point. Um, you can do things at those times if you need to, but you have to consider that you know when when the in winter when the grasses are dormant or in summer when they're under drought stress perhaps those are times you don't want to be giving them any more stress. Yep. So this spring is really the best time to be doing a lot of things in your lawn, but don't forget about autumn as well. Uh, very often we do everything in spring because we're looking forward to summer and getting out onto the lawn and enjoying it. And in autumn, you're thinking about winter coming and you want to ignore it all. But actually, if you do a lot of these things in autumn, come the following spring, you won't have to do so much because you'll have solved all the problems before winter and the, the grass will have uh, survived through the winter uh, more healthily and you'll have less problems the next, the next spring. Uh, so the, the, nec the next problem, sorry about talking about nothing but problems, but uh, uh, insect pests, um, the sort of common ones that might, we might get this part of the world would be grass grub. Um, grass grub is a, it's a, well it's a beetle, brown beetle, that lays, lays her eggs in, in turf areas, lawns or pasture, and the grubs that hatch out from the eggs dig down into the soil and they feed on grass roots and the roots of other plants. Uh, but when they, when they feed, if there are enough of them, they will do quite a lot of damage to the grass itself. They'll kill off the grass. So you start to get mottled dead patches, these mottled brown patches of grass on your lawn. If you suspect that it might be grass grub, if you go and grab some of that brown ground off grass and just give it a tug. If it comes away easily, you've probably got grass grub because the roots have been eaten away of the grass. So there's nothing holding the grass under the soil any longer. You can be absolutely sure by taking out a 20 by 20 centimeter saw, sawed on the, in, the, in the lawn and taking it, lifting it out and having a look to see if there are grub there. They're little C-shaped uh, pale grubs. And if you find those, um, then you'd be applying the Lawn Pro Protect, which is a, a granular uh, insecticide, it's like sand really, and you just sprinkle it on the lawn, and the insecticide goes down into the soil and will will kill the grubs when they come up to the surface to feed feed on the uh, on the grass roots, and it's good as both a protectant and it will work as a cur curative. Um, you tend to get most damage from grass grub in spring and autumn. There are a couple of other things that might do similar damage as the Purina caterpillar. So if you see holes in your lawn, like someone's gone along and pushed a, a pen or a pencil into the soil, you will find down at the bottom of that tunnel is a, a grey-brown caterpillar. Uh, of a moth, and that caterpillar comes up onto the top, up, up onto the soil surface at night, and it eats the crowns of the grass and kills the grass. And again, you'll get that mottled brown appearance. But what you're looking for is the, are those uh, holes in the lawn, and they're sort of deep holes, like someone's pushed a pen all the way down in. Protect works very well on those, so that insecticide sitting on the surface when the caterpillar comes up onto the surface. Um, It'll, it'll kill them. Um, and I often get calls from people who've used the Protect where they've got Purina caterpillar, they'll call up the next morning and say, oh, but I used Protect on the lawn last night and it rained and there are all these dead caterpillars on the lawn. Is it the, all right for the birds to be eating them? It is, thankfully. The other question I get is, is the Protect going to do any harm to earthworms? Of course, earthworms are good in your lawn. Um, no, it won't harm the earthworms. Um, another thing that you might be interested in with the Protect uh, and per in Canterbury is uh, ants. If you have a problem with ants in your garden, the Protect will control ants if they're nesting in your lawn or wandering back through your lawn into your flower beds, etc. Protect will control ants as well. <coughs> um, another thing about 
the sort of bare patches you might get in your lawn. So you might get bare patches that you want to repair, and those might be patches that have been developed through wear and tear, just playing around on the lawn or under a, under a swinging seat or something like that. Or it might be from grass grub damage, or it might be from red thread damage, or it might be where you've got rid of weeds, um, and you're looking to repair those patches. Um, and sowing seed, this is great weather, um, as long as we don't get really cold snap, um, to get out there and, and, and repair your lawn. So we have Kiwi Care have several products for repairing your lawn, and of course older rings have uh, several lawn sleeve blends as well. Uh, my, my personal favorite is lawn thickener. So after a stressful uh, winter or summer period, and your lawn's looking a bit thin and bare, or it has some bare patches around, Lawn th Thickener is a, a combination of lawn seed, um, fertilizers, both immediately available for uh, when the seed germinates, but long term as well to keep it healthy, get it established fully, and gypsum for encouraging the breakdown of any clay soils, opening up the structure, and allowing the, the grass roots to penetrate deeper. And it comes in a, this has actually changed. We have a nice new one coming along, uh, applicator. So you simply put down the, uh, the spout and you simply walk over the lawn. Uh, the granules and the seeds run down here, hit the ball and spread. So it's quite easy to spread on your lawn. Yes? Yes. Okay. Yeah, that's one I didn't talk about. I should have talked about that. Yeah, so dogs, particularly some female dogs, Labradors, etc., if they uh, toilet on the, on the lawn, uh, they will often kill the lawn grass. It's actually an excess of nitrogen in the urine, uh, particularly on a lawn that you've maybe already been fertilizing. Um, so there, there are, I believe, tablets that you can get from your vet that you can give to the dog that reduces the nitrogen level in the urine um, and reduces the likelihood of causing that damage on the lawn. Uh, but if you do know where the lawn, if the, the lawn's starting to go there, going brown, if you can get out and put on as much water as you can to try and flush that nitrogen out of the soil, you might stop too much damage. But it should, it should calm down once... Uh, once, unfortunately, if, you, if the patch is dead, it's dead. So that's maybe a time where you would do want to repair that patch. patch. Um, so another product that we have for repairing those sort of smaller patches is our Lawn Pro Smart Patch Mix, which is sort of everything you need for fi fixing patches all in one packet. So instead of buying a a top, a top dressing and seed and all the rest of it, the fertilizer, it's all in here. Um, it also has soil improver and water retention granules. So it's all in, all in one pack. Um, this is enough to do ooh, uh, sort of 10 patches in a lawn of a, of a sort of dog urine size patch. Um, and last but certainly not least um, is our smart lawn seed. So again, like the, in the Kiwi Care way, we put everything in the one packet. So for convenience, you're not buying several different things. So in here, there is lawn seed. And I should say the lawn seed that we have in all these products contains seed with what we call our aqua gel coating. So it's a coating that holds on to moisture. Um, it actually holds on to 400 times its own weight in moisture. Um, what that means is that if you are, if you forget to water the where you've applied the seed, or you get a particularly dry patch, because the seed is holding on to its own moisture, you still get a good strike. So we sort of guarantee its uh, germination. Uh, but there's also in here to say that these, the fertilizer that the, the seed needs is as, it, as it germinates, and for ongoing growth for several months. It also contains um, humates and humic acids, so these are the, you could call it the food for the beneficial microorganisms in the soil. So it's humus. You might be all familiar with humus. It's, it's organic material that needs to be in the soil. 
and that organic material is slowly broken down by the microorganisms in the soil, the beneficial ones. Um, and if your soil doesn't have, a, have enough humus or humates or humic acids, it's not going to be healthy. So we've put that in there as well. Um, yes, sir. Yeah, if, you're, if you carefully apply around the edge, yeah, what very happens is along the edge of a flower bed, just because you've cut, if you've cut away the edge, um, it's the roots going down at the edge are being exposed at that edge or they're, or they're dry, that the edge dries out more quickly than further into the lawn because it's got that other uh, surface to be drying off. Um, so yeah, you can obviously, if you put some sort of edging material, which I'm sure O-rings have, uh, around those edges, that helps stop that die off along the edge. Um, yeah, I would just, go, the other thing you can do is just go along, you know, every, every year and trim it off, you know, up, ex, uh, cut back that dead material or, or put on some new uh, seed and get it going. Yeah. Uh, a little bit about mowing. Um, our advice is never mow more than one third of the height of the grass off. So if your grass is 60 millimeters high, you would never mow, no, mow more than 20 millimeters off it. Um, if you're cutting more than that off, you're doing too much damage to the lawn. And we would say, I, th I think a lot of people try and, try and mow their lawns much too short, in my opinion. They're sort of looking for that bowling green effect, whereas it's better to leave them a bit longer um, and keep them green and even. If you mow something too short, you risk scalping. So if the, if the lawn isn't absolutely flat and there are undulations in it, you will be taking more off where the, where the lawn is a bit raised and you're, it will, that grass will brown off more quickly and you'll get uneven looking lawns. So you'll get lighter browner areas where it's been shorter and greener long, where it's longer. So if you want a nice even sward, uh, raise your mower height a notch or two. Um, it's sort of false economy. People maybe mow their lawns shorter thinking, well, it means I won't have to mow it again so quickly. Um, Lawn grasses, grasses they origin, originated in the, in the savannah, for example, and they evolved where grazing animals would eat them. So that's why their growing crown, their growing tip is down at the base of the plant where the uh, grazing animals won't damage it. But when, when that happens, when a grazing animal comes along and eats, eats it down, it actually encourages that growing center to grow faster. So if you cut your lawn too short, all you're doing is telling it to grow faster. So grow it, cut it a bit longer, and it, won't, it actually won't grow as fast. Um, a question that the gentleman asked about mulching or not mulching. <laughs> um, my advice is if you're, if you're only trimming the lawn and you're only cutting off short top and leveling it off, trimming it, then it's fine to let those clippings back onto the lawn and they'll work their way down into the thatch layer and be broken down, particularly if you're using the dethatch. If you're mowing a lot off your lawn and you've let your lawn grow long, um, then collect it. Take it off the lawn. You do not want clumps of grass sitting on your lawn if you can help it. Take that off, put it in the compost, do something good with it. Uh, but if you leave that on the lawn, then you risk uh, creating too much thatch and getting those problems. So take, take the long stuff off, put the, the short clippings back in, into the lawn as mulch, and you'll have a healthy lawn. Um, one thing about lawns is it is one of those things, because we're mowing them all the time, Every time we mow something, we take all those clippings off, then we are taking nutrients out of the lawn. 
So you ha do have to replace those nutrients, which is why lawns are one of those places. It is a good thing to be applying fertilizer every now and then to replenish the nutrients that you're removing. Well, yeah, I suppose it depends on your mower um, and what sort of, if you're, if you're looking for the fine effect, you know, then, then uh, uh, you'd be having a, a cylinder mower and sort of doing, doing nice stripes. But if you have a, a hover mower type thing, then, you know, you, you tend to be cutting one way and cutting another and you get sort of different patterns. So if you want a, a, a better, more even lawn, then you might go over your lawn a couple of times, but probably not on the bank. <laughs> Yeah, so there are advantages if you want the most even lawn, then you could do it uh, north-south and then east-west, yep, for the best results if you're looking for a stadium lawn. Um, just a little bit, bit about irrigation. I sort of mentioned earlier about um, uh, just water in the morning, not in the evening, so that the lawn dries out through the day and is not sitting wet through the night. And the other thing would be saying, if you're irrigating your lawn, l <coughs> irrigate it for a long time infrequently is better than frequently all the time. So don't be setting your irrigation on to come on for 15 minutes every day. You're far better to put it on for, for an hour er every several days. Because what you actually want is the water to get down deep in the soil. Water, when the water is deep in the soil, it's not evaporating off so quickly, so the, the lawn will stay uh, healthy longer, and you're encouraging the roots of the grasses to go deep after following the water. So you want your lawn grasses' roots to go as deep as possible. The deeper they are, uh, the more drought tolerant the lawn will be. If you're just watering infrequently, and you're just wetting the top surface, that's where the roots will stay. And then as soon as you get a drought coming along, what's going to dry off first? That top place, top part of the soil where the roots are, and your grass goes brown and dies off. So encourage deep rooting. So <coughs> not little and often, uh, but uh, long and infrequently. OK, sorry, yes. So, I uh, didn't quite catch all that, but you've got rabbits or other animals that would be on your lawn, and you're asking about using the like of the herbicides on the lawn, how to long to keep them off. Well, I would certainly be keeping them off uh, while you're applying and until it's completely dry. Um, these products are not, well, that's sort of an interesting one. They're, they're not registered for use on animal feed crops. So you wouldn't be using them in, in a paddock where you had sheep or something like that. Um, however, very similar products do have such a registration so that the herbicides wouldn't be doing any harm. But our recommendation for someone who has rabbits, for example, in a hutch that you might be moving around would be to spray off half the lawn, um, leave it, a, leave it uh, a week or two and then move the rabbits onto that area and do the other one, that sort of thing. Uh, but I don't imagine you're going to be, it's, it's more to do with uh, animals that you might be going to consume, and I don't imagine you're going to consume your rabbits. <laughs> Any other questions? Sorry, yes, sir. Y yes, I mean, you, you can leave it if, you're, if you've got a mossy area um, and you kill off the moss with the moss clear. Um, and you do the other remedial action of improving the drainage and adding, adding lime to bring up the pH, etc. The moss will naturally die off as part of that thatch layer. And if you sow it over with uh, grass seed, you can replace the moss with the seed. But you might not want to wait that long. So you can, once you've killed the moss, then you can rake it out with a grass rake um, and re over sow the area. Yeah.
Right. So, so you've got a, a flat area of lawn that is held up at one side by a retaining wall, and the grass isn't growing very well close to the wall. Yeah, so ag again, it'll be like the gentleman asked about the edges of flower beds. Uh, and it might even be that if, if it's a relatively new lawn, that the, the concrete in the, in the lawn has raised the pH in the soil very close to the, uh, along that edge. Uh, so it's maybe even too high for the lawn grasses. Um, so yes, you, you could just sort of actually dig out a bit, uh, uh, a good 20 centimetres along that edge and put in some new soil and re-sow it. That you might fi fi find that works. The other thing it might be is it's just drying off out too quickly along where the wall is, particularly if it's a concrete wall. It's absorbing the moisture out of the soil and so that edge is staying drier. So you might be able to take it back and then put um, polythene or other impervious material against the wall, not all the way down because obviously you want the drainage, uh, but just along the top where the, where the grass roots would be um, so that it'll, the grass will grow more effectively or uh, healthily there. Yeah, I'll give that a go. <laughs> uh, well, Roundup or glyphosate. Um, glyphosate is a very effective herbicide. Um, it's a, a systemic herbicide. It'll deal with a lot of the weeds that we tend to have as general weeds around, around gardens very effectively, kills them down to the roots. There are some current controversies ar uh, around the world about how, how safe glyphosate is. All I can say is the New Zealand EPA, amongst other organisations around the world, have looked very thoroughly at glyphosate and they are quite happy to have glyphosate approved for use in New Zealand. Um, we have glyphosate products and we have non-glyphosate products. So if you don't want to use glyphosate, you can use the, the Weed Weapon Natural Power, which is our organic herbicide. If you don't mind using glyphosate and you like the, the good effects that it has, then we have Weed Weapon Extra Strength and Weed Weapon Long Term, which are glyphosate plus other active ingredients for, uh, for better efficacy. But yeah, our opinion is while it's approved in New Zealand, uh, then people are at liberty to use it. And uh, in home garden use, I do not believe there is any significant risk from it. The only risks there might be from it, and as far as I can see, that hasn't really been proved, would be sort of broad scale use. It is the most used herbicide in the world. And I think that, if there is an issue, that's the issue, not, not the stuff itself. So, sorry, I didn't. Is there a conflict between fertilizing and... No, that, for moss it doesn't matter. The, the moss clear herbicide uh, is, is actually more of a sterilization product. It's stuff called dichlorophen. Uh, it kills simple organisms like algae, uh, bacteria, uh, mosses, lichens, liverworts, uh, things that don't have woody stems, etc. Um, so it, it, it kills the moss quite quickly and then really has very little ongoing effect. So if you can get, uh, you, there's, not, there's no problem using fertilizer or putting seed down afterward, it's not going to harm that. Thanks, so, Nicola. Good, um, good suggestion, yes. David's probably ready to wrap up. Did anyone have any further questions to that? Oh, 
Well, thank you so much, everybody, for coming, and thank you so much, David. Oh, thank you. Wealth of experience. David is um, going to pop up to the shop so that he can answer any questions that you have um, just briefly while we help pack up down here. And uh, thank you so much for coming out. Thank <laughs> you.